Good morning and welcome to Virtual Sunday School this week. Uh, this week we're going to do a recorded video and then sometimes we'll try Zoom meetings for people who feel like doing it and recorded videos and we're just going to try a bunch of stuff and see what works and what doesn't. So here goes day one. So today is October 4th, 2020. And I love the first Sunday of October. It's always one of my favorite cool church days. It's called World Communion Day. So communion, you'll remember, is a special meal that we use to remember Jesus and the love that Jesus has for us and the love that God has. And it's something we do together to accept God's grace and to make sure we remember how much God loves us. So communion is love. And the cool thing about World Communion Sunday is that people take communions, communion at different times and different places. Um, but on that Sunday, it's celebrated all over the world and everybody's doing it at the same time. And I always think that's really cool. And so World Communion Sunday, I think, is a really neat celebration to celebrate the love of God with the people of the globe. Typically at our church, um, a year ago, we would have taken communion using a loaf of bread, usually made of wheat, and taping, taking that bread and dipping it into a cup of grape juice, and then we eat it. That's how we typically do our communion at our church. Uh, some churches do it differently. Some churches have teeny tiny cups. In our church, when I was a kid, we had teeny, teeny, tiny cups, and we would walk up to the front of the church, and the pastor would give us a piece of bread and one of those teeny, teeny cups, and we would kneel and drink from the cup and eat the bread, and then somebody would have to wash out all those teeny, tiny cups. <laughs> First, somebody had to fill every teeny, tiny cup with grape juice. That's crazy. I'm glad it wasn't my job. Um, so... That's one thing that, that's a different way to take communion. In other churches, they, um, it, especially we think about it when we think about the Catholic Church, is there's a wafer, which is sort of a thin, crispy, cracker type thing. And they might drink. I have a friend who goes to a church where they all drink from the same cup, which is... Oh, that's just germs. I can't even. I don't like drinking from the same cup as my husband, really. Mm. Not to mention a whole church full of people. I don't know if they do that right now, but that's the way they do it. And that's their tradition. Some people might think it's really gross to dip a piece of bread into grape juice. And it is a little gross, but it's our tradition and it's how we do it. And there are things all over the world that people do that are different from us. Which brings me to our book of the day. This is a really cool book. It's called People. Simple title. And it was really written and illustrated by Peter Spire. And as you can see, it's about people, all kinds. And I'm not going to read the whole thing, but um, so it talks about how many people there are on the earth. There's about six, I think it's getting close to seven billion people on earth right now. And no two people are alike. We have different sizes and shapes different colors of skin, different 
eye shapes and colors. Noses come in every shape imaginable. So do faces, lips, ears, and everything else. And think about our hair. Even the hair that you just encounter on a regular day, like even going to Target, think about how many different hairstyles, hair colors, hair textures that you see just in one day here in our town in upstate New York, much less all over the world. That's pretty cool. People are funny. Some with straight hair want theirs to be wavy, and others with little curls want to make them straight. That's absolutely true. So some of the other things I want to highlight are from this book. This is a really cool book, and I'll keep it around church for a while. So if you guys want to take a look at it, you can come over to the church and take a look at it. Um, it says, you know, some of us love noise and some can't stand it. That's very true. And not everybody's idea of a good time is alike. That is also very true. So this is one of my favorite pages to show you guys. It's about playtime. Everybody loves to play all over the world. But not everyone plays the same games everywhere. Here's pictures from the British Isles and Commonwealth. And a lot of places that uh, used to be part of Britain play cricket which is not a game I completely understand, no matter how much British TV I watch. Um, here, in, let's see, in Southeast Asia, they have something called kite fighting. And in, oh, this one's cool. I like this one. In Japan, they do thumb wrestling. We do that here too, right? Or at least I do. I love thumb, thumb wrestling. Uh, we have the rodeo here in the USA. And uh, let's see, doing string figures in Africa. And these are all just different ways that people play. And in India, they play a game called Old Lady, Old Lady. I'm gonna look that one up and see what, how you play it. Old Lady, Old Lady. And then on this page, they show the different kinds of homes people build all over the world. And homes are built different ways for different reasons. Sometimes it's because of the way the climate is and where you live. You wouldn't build the same type of house on a snowy hillside in Nepal as you would in the middle of the desert in Mexico. So they have different types of homes for different types of people. It's pretty cool. I love it. Here's some more. And then, especially to celebrate World Communion, is a page about food and all the types of food people eat. This is really cool. Check it out. Like this one. Look at that. Brazilian steakhouse style. It's pretty neat. <laughs> And sometimes people eat foods that uh, we would consider a crazy food to eat. Like in New Guinea, they eat snake and lizard. And I bet not a lot of you would be willing to eat that. You might think that's strange. But they might think it's strange that we eat cows. Or they might think it's strange that we eat little crackers that look like fish, and they are the yummiest. Um, 
So there's different, oh, this picture has um, different kinds of bugs you can eat. Which is not something we see every day, right? And so sometimes the foods that people always want to eat and think of eating are not the foods that we would like bread dipped in grape juice. And if you can think of a food that you eat that somebody from somewhere else would be like, what? I have no idea. Why would you eat that? My husband and I are always talking about who was the first person to eat a lobster. Lobster is considered to be this, you know, delicious thing and it's very expensive and fancy and special. But who looked at that lobster and said, that thing's going to be delicious and I'm going to charge $17.99 a pound for it. It's going to be great. I don't know who did that, but it wasn't me. That's for sure. Um, so different foods mean different things to people. So as we're celebrating World Communion Sunday, let's think of, you know, usually our communion is bread and juice. And other places, it's a wafer and wine. And in other countries where they have different types of bread, it may be different. It might not be that fluffy loaf that we're used to Mrs. Demick getting us for Sunday mornings. It might be pita bread that's flatter and a little um, more flourier. It might be uh, bread made from corn in areas where they can't really grow wheat. It might uh, be a rice cracker in places where rice grows more plentifully than other things. And so think of those today while you're taking communion with your family. Um, today's World Communion Sunday. And so the church has given permission for the people of its faith body to take communion at home. So take a few minutes together and have some bread of some kind. It can be whatever you have around and a drink of some kind. And when you do it, think of God. Think of God's love for Jesus. Think of Jesus' love for us and think of each other and all the people around the world that are doing this at the same time as you. So if you took home a craft kit from our Sunday school class last week, you have inside a laminated paper that has, um, it looks like a cup and bread on it. And that's a Play-Doh mat. A Play-Doh mat is a cool way to just use some Play-Doh to make cool things and you can use it over and over again. So I laminated them so that they can be used over and over again. And if you have a Play-Doh bin at home, you can just put it in your Play-Doh bin. So when you feel like making Play-Doh communion, you can. If you didn't take home a Sunday school kit last week, you're not missing much for this week actually. You're just missing the Play-Doh mat. And and a little bit of Play-Doh. <laughs> but if you have Play-Doh at home, which we have tons of, or something similar, some slime, or if you want to grab a pencil and paper and draw, that's great too. So we're going to make um, Play-Doh communion. I'm going to make a, a cup. I, I pulled yellow out of the bin. I just went blindly. It's a little above my line of sight our Play-Doh bin, so I just stuck my hand in and I got my favorite color. So lucky. So I usually like to drink out of a cup that is pretty simple and not a fancy crystal goblet. Some people might prefer to drink their communion out of a fancy crystal goblet. Some people might want to drink it out of um, a dirty hydro flask. That's Henry's. Some people might want to drink it out of a pottery mug. 
And in different places in the world, people would drink it out of different kinds of vessels, depending on where they live and what kinds of things they have access to. Um, probably for lots of you, it's Tupperware, or maybe it's a juice box. So this is going to be my communion. It looks more like a bowl. But so does my big latte mug that I like to drink my coffee out of on Saturday morning. So, you know, maybe I will make it into a mug. See, it looks like a, a bowl. I'll make it a mug instead. Maybe I'll put two handles on it. What are you doing with yours? I'm going to put two handles on it. It's going to make it a little fancier. You know? A little fancier never killed anybody. Huh. While I was playing Play-Doh, I turned the computer off. So anyway, here's my fancy cup. And then I'm going to make um, this really unfancy. This is my piece of bread. <laughs> called a shortcut but you can make your bread look like anything you want again you can make it look like a rice cracker that's easy make it a ball and then flatten it then it looks like a little cracker or you could make it look like a serious piece of toast but I'm not very artistic like that like this oh, lost one of its handles my little communion cup uh, is about as artistic with clay or Play-Doh as I'm going to get. Ooh, a bread cube. Here's a bread cube. That's good. It looks like a crouton. Ooh, croutons. That would make a good communion. You could dip it. Don't eat the Play-Doh. And then on the Play-Doh mat, it also says, so that meal where Jesus said, take this cup and drink. And when you drink, think of me, take this bread and eat. And when you eat, think of me. That was a special meal for them. That was Passover, which was a really, it and still is a very, very important Jewish holiday. It comes near Easter. And so that was a really special meal. And we don't celebrate Passover in our church, but we all celebrate special things. So think of a special meal that you celebrate and make a Play-Doh version of that special meal. What is one of your special meals? One of my favorite special meals is my mom used to make Swedish meatballs on Christmas Day for Christmas dinner. And they are so good. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna take my little communion mug I made and I'm gonna put meatballs in it to be my Swedish meatballs. Sue's Swedish meatballs. They're so good. Sometimes she still makes them, but there's a lot more family members now than there were when we were kids. Now we have grandkids and sons in law and it takes a lot of meatballs to feed all those people, and making meatballs is hard, you know. Look, this is just me making four little Play-Doh meatballs. It's time-consuming. So now we have taco bowls for Christmas dinner, which, by the way, is my favorite meal in the whole world, is to have a taco bowl. So here is my, my special meal. If you think of it, take a picture of your special Play-Doh meal or your specially drawn meal that you have and take a picture of it and send it to me so we can share it with the world on World Communion Sunday. Thanks for joining me for Virtual Sunday School. I'll send an email about next week. If you want to pick up a, a kit for the next couple of weeks with materials for the future virtual Sunday schools, just have your mom or dads send me an email at church and I will get
get you the stuff you need to do Sunday school. I love you all so very much. Let's pray together before we finish up. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together on this special Sunday. Help us join with the rest of the world as we remember you and remember Jesus and remember the love you have for us every day. Help us show that love to others so that the whole world can feel the joy that we feel. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. See you soon. Love you.